Hello, it is Thursday, May 4th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Thursday crossword today, which means potentially a tricky theme and maybe a bit of a step up in difficulty from yesterday's midweek, mid-difficulty Wednesday grid. We'll just have to find out, and this potentially tricky themed edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by David Innes, Bradley Pirtle, Alex, and, as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark, and the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support they're sustaining this channel. And for that, I'm extremely grateful. So thank you if you, um, well, if you are one of them, or if you are any patron of the channel, I really do appreciate it. It does keep this channel going. So thank you for that. And if you'd like to become a patron yourself, help support this channel, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field underneath the video. And there you can find all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each weekend. Of course, as a benefactor, you also get the daily solve. Let's check the crosses official mug. So um, enjoy those things if you have received them through your patronage, for which I'm appreciative. Um, and you can also join the Daily Solve Discord chat server. Anybody can join that. There's a link in the description field. It's a nice, friendly chat community. And finally, if you've not yet gotten around to subscribing to the YouTube channel, please do that as well. Um, I would greatly appreciate that, and it helps spread this channel on YouTube with their algorithms and, and all of that sort of thing. So thanks if you've done any of those, uh, taken any of those actions, I suppose. And before uh, before solving today's puzzle, before attempting today's puzzle and presumably solving it, uh, I wanted to read a comment that, uh, well, a question I was asked on yesterday's puzzle from Kevin Weatherwalks, who says, I'm always amazed at how quickly you pick up on the theme. Did you have a similar ability when you started doing the themed crosswords, or have you gotten better at it over time? The reason I wanted to um, to read this wasn't out of um, pure self-regard, but rather um, because it made me reflect on, on how much the answer to this was absolutely no before I started doing this series. In fact, I've been solving the New York Times crossword for a very long time, for you know, many years, as you can see in my streak um, when the puzzle completes, which I think is 1400 something right now, although I've been solving it longer than that would reflect because the streak had broken at some point in the past. Um, but anyway, the reason I bring that up is to say, for the vast majority of that time, I had really only marginal um, awareness of the New York Times crossword as a primarily themed crossword. I think I thought of the theme as something that came up sometimes. I, I, believe it or not, I was completely unaware of the pattern that all Sunday to uh, Thursday puzzles are themed and Friday and Saturday are not. I had no idea that was a convention until I started doing this series. Um, there were many times where I think I would complete a puzzle and not observe the theme whatsoever. I would have no, I wouldn't have paid attention to it because I would have solved the puzzle in a sort of haphazard way. And um, before I started doing the puzzle on video, my solving was mainly, I wasn't solving for speed in the sense that I wasn't trying to accomplish a speed run type of, um, type of solve. But I was trying to solve, reasonably speaking, as quickly as I as I could. Whereas solving on video, that isn't a particular goal at all, because I'm obviously explaining clues and thinking, talking through my my thought process and so on. Um, and anyway, the result of how I solved off camera was just that I would often completely ignore the theme and not realize it was there. So it really has only been since I've started recording this series that I've started engaging with the theme in every puzzle actively. And that has enormously improved the extent to which I can predict a theme or recognize it once it appears. Um, and it just demonstrates how much of really any sort of skill comes down to repetition and experience. And I think because I'm required through this video to explain the theme and to recognize it at some point, it has, um, I don't know, I guess engaged whatever part of the brain it is that um, is responsible for that kind of logical, um, I don't know, connection or, or sort of leaps of logic in some case. And I, I guess it's just, it's it's worked it harder than it otherwise would have. So I think I've, I've improved at that much more quickly, simply due to the way that I'm, I'm encouraged to solve puzzles on these videos. So yeah, the answer is no, I didn't, I didn't 
<laughs> I don't think I was particularly strong in that regard pri prior to the daily solve. Um, but I can feel that I have improved a great deal as a result. So anyway, I hope that's helpful in the sense that I don't think I'm, I, I sort of started with some kind of brilliant prodigy, like theme understanding. I still wouldn't say I'm that, by the way, I'm not claiming I'm, I'm particularly great now. I mean, there are many people, there uh, may well be people watching this series who are much, much better solvers than I am, but, um, but I certainly have improved a great deal. And I think it is due to the, the sort of focused way in which I, I'm, I sort of encourage myself to solve on this series. Anyway, uh, that's that. That went on longer than I intended it to. So let's get right on to the puzzle. This is a construction by David J. Kahn, who's an extremely experienced, speaking of experience, this person's extremely experienced having solved or constructed, sorry, almost 200 puzzles for the New York Times. And it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving. Scratch the surface of, say, you could mar a surface, sort of scuff it or something. Let's see. Criminal patterns in brief. Mm, modus operandi or something like that. I'm just thinking if, if that's an M. Bit of samurai attire. That could be an OB. Okay, let's try mar and oh, oops. Let's try mar and OB and see if this if this helps. Still not sure, although it starts with Mo. I think there's a version of this that is obvious that I, I just can't think of right now. Overflow with is a bound or to overflow with to this feels right on the tip of my tongue and I just can't get it. Writer Morrison. Can't think of this either. Lose crisp, crispness as cereal is to sog maybe. Overflow with a bound. What is it? Uh, suppress is to deter or to clamp down or what? I really want to get this area because I'm so frustrated with myself for not thinking of these particular words. Let's loose is un... Let's loose. Unzips or unties or un... It probably starts with un and ends with s. That's my guess. I'm going to put it in for now until proven otherwise. Loved one is a relative akin um, a glare reducer a screen or glare reducer glare reducer uh, demon in japanese folklore i'm sure i know this as well this is just so frustrating i think these um, sometimes I just feel I can't place what something is. And then sometimes I feel as though I'm on the verge of doing so and just can't quite, this does look like overflow with a bound in on of, what is this? Loved one. Criminal patterns in brief. Oh, I can't believe. <laughs> uh, tint, a tinted window, glare reducer. In a vehicle, for instance, a bound in overflow with. Does that make sense? Is this not a bound? Criminal patterns in brief. Mose, is there any way this is a plural? Mose is in... Motive or modus? I don't know. Maybe this isn't SOG. It seems like it would have to be, doesn't it? Suppress. Material that's bad for the mouth. Material that's bad for the mouth. Does it mean material as in kind of material you'd say, you'd deliver? I don't loved one a loved one one who is loved rather than your family member it could be an idol someone who is uh, um, adored so who is this who is writer morrison i mean the obvious thing that keeps coming to mind is tony morrison but that's obviously not the answer who who is this oh. 
I don't know. I can't think. I keep thinking of the pasta rigatoni. <laughs> um, but uh, that doesn't feel correct to me. Although, if it were rigatoni, this could be unties. Why would it be rigatoni? Uh, material that's bad for the mouth. Silt? I guess if you're sort of eating, I don't know, some seafoods, they could have silt in them and that does damage to your teeth. Does that suppress? I'm really mosquito criminal patterns in brief. What? Oh, maybe this is a theme thing. Mosquito rigatoni. Maybe I just, maybe I should just follow my instinct and spell the words that these look like they're creating. Suppresses to quash. That's right. Okay. I think this area is bafflingly correct. So what is going on? We have criminal patterns in brief. And writer Morrison. Oh, it is Tony. Tony Morrison. Riga. Criminal patterns in brief. MOs. Keto. It is MOs. Modus operandi. Um, interesting. So what does this mean? I don't know yet. Okay. <laughs> Get in hot water, I guess, to bathe, to take a bath. 1983 hit that won a Grammy for record of the year. Not sure offhand. Indication of an operation. A scar, maybe, of an indication of a medical operation. Columbo's country in Olympics shorthand. Does this mean Columbo the, the police lieutenant on television? Peter Falk character? I'm not sure what this is referring to. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, sorry. Scammer. A con man, maybe? someone who scams you, and what the Rays and Jays are in for short. Okay, I'm, I suspect this is a, um, a baseball thing, and it's the, it'll be the AL West or the AL East for the American League East or West. I hope that's right. It'll end with ST regardless. Let's check some crosses. Some farmer's market setups. You could have tents at a farmer's market sometimes if you don't have... Uh, more permanent structures. And fresh starts could be rebirths, renewals. Um, is, is it re? Yes. Play part is a role, a part in a dramatic production of play. Columbus country in Olympic shorthand. I don't, I'm not sure. I still don't know what this is. Uh, Oda Blank Brown, Whoopi Goldberg's role in Ghost. Oh, you know what? I've actually never seen Ghost, believe it or not. Um, looks like it could be May, maybe. Oda May Brown? I don't know. Sounds plausible. Oh, that would allow this to be AL East. So if this were an E, which is the other possibility, this looks much less likely, just in general, with the with this across as well. Okay, I'm going to say it's probably AL East, and this is maybe May. Let's see. Fresh starts. Renews? Doesn't really work. I mean, you can't say I. that was a fresh start. That was a renew. A little after the hour, something passed. Okay, good. It's not renews. It's resets, of course. Why didn't I think of that? I don't know. A little after the hour. Ten past, maybe? You could say two past, but that's a bit odd sounding. Um, ten past one, for instance, is what I'm getting at. Uh, bench press target could be a, a pec, pectoral muscles, and flexible something ick, probably. It'll be an adjective kind of soup, a lentil soup, maybe? Maybe. What X might mean if this were an L? I don't know. May or may not be correct. Uh, C54 across, what is that? Uh, with 22 across, former senator, his name can be spelled using only the letters in Nebraska, his home state. Right. Um, I probably shouldn't spend too much time looking at this because I'm, I'm not, I don't immediately know what it is. And the possibilities of names are so broad, even with 
a given set of letters. What I don't know, I don't know if it means his name is an anagram of Nebraska, or it means simply his name includes some subset of the letters of Nebraska. It's probably that, which makes it more difficult because you can't just arrange the letters that are here. You can reuse letters, which I assume we're going to have to do. Ken something, maybe? I don't know. Like an otter's feet. Webbed. Okay. That's actually useful because there's a B from Nebraska here. Ben, maybe. Let's just try that and see. Jeanette, who was the first woman elected to Congress, 1916. Oh, it's infuriating that I can't bring, that I can't just know this. Ugh. I'll be even more annoyed if I don't recognize it when I see the answer. You might calmly tell someone not to do this. Calmly. Don't, oh, don't worry, you could say. The, the calmly was actually incredibly important there because without the calmly, I was thinking of something more scolding or kind of, you know, a, a warning of some sort. This is, this is more of a calm, okay. Mark in the World Golf Hall of Fame. Marco Mira comes up in crosswords all the time, or at least has done enough that I recognize the name. <laughs> oh, is it Jeanette Rankin? That sounds familiar to me. Like many email... It's not email. I thought email, and then I read it into the clue immediately and said, how could it be that? That was already in the answer. No. Like many invitations nowadays are emailed. That, that's, that's what it is. Um, sweetheart. Uh, well, now I'm thinking about these. <laughs> Mosquito or rig. I'm thinking, well, I thought of rigatoni in particular. I thought baked beans. That doesn't even fit. Never mind. Uh, baked potato. Sweetheart, baked potato. Is that something you could say? You could call someone a sweetheart, baked, baked potato? Is that... I don't know. Maybe a child you'd refer to that way? I'm not... Yeah. It seems plausible, but I'm not certain about it. Sign... No, I'm not sure about that. Name that can be heard phonetically somewhere in this clue. Eric or Aaron... Uh, phonetically, name that, name that can be heard phonetically somewhere in, Aaron, somewhere in this clue. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for <laughs> having to put you through that exercise, but it worked. Oh, sign to ink, to ink an agreement, to sign an agreement. And dungeon-like could be dank. You could have a dank, dark dungeon. Okay, this is not baked potato. It's something else. Baking. Maybe this will be another one of these theme things where baking is not part of the answer, but then this bit is, and I still don't really understand what's going on. Former name of Columbus country. Oh, is, is this Sri Lanka and Ceylon? That must be it. I was on completely the wrong track with Colombo. That'll be a city in Sri Lanka. Okay, I see. I see. I was just completely off track with that. There we go. All right. I'll sort it out now, I think. Hospital diagnos diagnostic for short. It could be an MRI, magnetic resonance imagery. Hollywood vis-a-vis -vis the film industry, e.g. A metonym is a, a, a word that sort of describes a thing based on where it's located or, or a thing that's used to, to refer to something based on where it's located. Um, oh, and here's our revealer. With 31 down, proceeds from the sale of an asset, capital gains. Oh, right. Capital cities. Riga. Is that the capital of Latvia? Oh, boy. This is, I'm going to, I'm not going <laughs> to know all of these. Quito sounds extremely, I know that that is a capital city, but I can't think, I can't remember of which country. Right. Okay. Sorry. Let me just see if this actually works. Capital. Yes. Capital gains. Okay, there we go. All right. Well, um, I didn't uh, immediately understand this theme. I was wondering if it was going to be Riga Lot. I, th I knew these were cities. I should have said it aloud that I knew these were cities to at least have it on the record, but I didn't. I in no way was what I have jumped to capital gains. There was no chance of that possibly happening um, off the off the bat. Um, in any case, 
that is our theme, capital gains. We are ga- The answers are gaining capital city names. That's very clever. Uh, okay, let's keep going. Drops in the gym. Squat, drops. Oh, sweat, beads of sweat, drops of sweat form. To go back and forth in a way is to wag your finger or head maybe. Pedigree competitor, uh, I think this is pet food brands, Alpo and Pedigree compete in that market. And something flexible is elastic. Ailment treated with a warming compress, could be a sty in your eye, for instance. And the Holy See, the, the Vatican, for instance. And not as fierce is tamer, more tame. Kind of identity, a... I'm not sure offhand. What about this? This does look like lentil soup, doesn't it? Um, oh, right, in this Nebraska. Oh, Ben... Ben Sass, that's that's a former senator, right? That you can spell that name entirely using the letters in Nebraska. Yeah. Okay. You don't need the R nor the K. Charitable relief alms, maybe, sort of alms for the poor. Not sure if I'm not I don't know. Let's well let's let's put it in and check the crosses quickly. 1983 hit that won a Grammy for record of the year. I don't know. Refer to And what X might mean. Something lines? I don't know. Hmm. Helicon, e.g. musically speaking. I don't know. What is that? An oft-abbreviated Latin phrase, id est, abbreviated I-E. Um, you know, when you're explaining something and you're sort of... Uh, unpacking a concept and you'd say, you know, IE, and then give the, that explanation, it est. Short could be terse if you're being short with somebody, you're being terse with them. So what is this? Do I know what this is? This Grammy winner? I don't think I do. Refer to, allude to something maybe. You could allude to it, refer to it in maybe a slightly elliptical way. X might mean... What is this? Is it X on a map? Is it sort of on a, a city map or something? Helicon, e.g. music. Oh, is it a tuba? Is this referring to the shape of the tuba, the way that it um, kind of spirals around? Timber. Is this timber lines? Oh, is it on maybe on a topographical map or something? Timber lines. I think that, I mean, I wouldn't have just known this off the top of my head, but it's sort of, it's, I can picture it, I think in my mind, now that I'm seeing it. So this would be alms, charitable relief. And then NFL quarterback, Apple, Ali, maybe, I don't know. Oh no, beat it, the uh, Michael Jackson record. Okay, so Eli, Eli Apple. Okay, I don't know that, that name is not familiar to me in the slightest, but that should be no surprise. Uh, Compadre could be a pal, maybe. And fellows are, not sure. California concert site featured in the documentary, Gimme Shelter. Uh, I don't know. This would be about the Rolling Stones, I guess. California concert site. I'm not sure offhand. Some corporate takeovers are leveraged buyouts, maybe? I'm just trying to think because it starts with L. I don't know how you do that in this many letters. Because I think LBO is an abbreviation, but that's too long. Oh, maybe it's another one of these city things. I don't know. Fashion designer Raban, not sure. King Lear's son, uh, Edgar. Horace was one noted, but Horace was a notable Odist. Uh, a notable writer of the official poetic form of the New York Times crossword, the Ode. So there you have it. Um, it's back again. Summer music. Uh, summer music. I don't know. Toe jam stub? You stub your toe? You jam it into, you know, a wall or something? In toto completely? Oh, this was just, I think, just in the puzzle within the last few days. Uh, it was confirmed by a commenter to be indeed from Latin, as I 
assumed it was. Uh, sweetheart. What is this? I don't know. More discerning. Acuter? You have acuter taste? More discerning taste, maybe? Oh, I just saw, sorry. I just saw in the clue. Brian of Ambient Music. Brian Eno, one of our one of our official solo musicians of the New York Times crossword. And metal workers, question mark, maybe robots. Workers made of metal rather than people who work with metal, steel workers or something. And the question mark indicates that punny reading of, of this clue. This looks like disco. Oh, summer music, disco. Oh, Donna Summer, I guess. Disco, is that right? I think so. So Sweetheart Baking Stone. Oh, right. Okay. It's Kingston, Jamaica, right? So Bay, Sweetheart is Bay. <laughs> Very good. Very clever. I hadn't been thinking of these as being able to come in the middle because they didn't in these two examples. Right. Okay. So which, how many, six answers in this puzzle. So we have one, two, three. Is Timberline's one? What X might mean? I thought this read fine as, as, a, as an answer, but maybe it does. Oh, no, it doesn't. It's Berlin. Oh, right. Okay. I thought because Timberline, I think of that as being a concept on a sort of topographical map. And I was thinking this must, and I was sort of imagining, imagining it in my head. Oh, that's really interesting. So it's Berlin, Germany, and then times as in the multiplication symbol. Right. Okay. There we go. This isn't my finest day for demonstrating my <laughs> mastery of themes, despite the, the introductory question. Fellows, uh, could end in an S, GPS display abbreviation. Well, I don't know. My, my thought when I see this is more that it's root. Let's see. California concert site. And some corporate takeovers. Oh, right. But actually, because of this thing where now these can, now I understand that that the uh, capital gains bit can come in the middle of the clue. This could be LBOs. Los Lobos? Oh, yeah, it is, right, because Oslo, Norway is right here, and then LBOs surrounds it, right? Very clever. Okay, good. All right, that one took me an extra few moments to, to parse for some reason. I guess because of all of the, the repetition of the L and O and S was all over the place, and I couldn't quite get a grip on what I was doing. Okay, leading to goblin, you could have a hobgoblin. Which I don't, what exactly, def how do you define a hobgoblin as opposed to a goblin? I don't exactly know. Fellows. Um, GPS display streets, maybe? I'm thinking this probably ends in S, but California concert site. Oh, right, of course, this is going to be a themed answer. So, oh no, it's not, sorry. If it's symmetrical to this side of the grid, then this will be the theme answer, right, okay. So maybe this is PALS. Could this be P-A-L and then S and then... This is something else. Oh, no, but didn't we have... Do I have a memory of us putting PAL in the grid? No, I don't know. Maybe not. Am I just making that up? I don't know. Okay, in any case, what is this? Fellows. PALs. I'm not sure. Oops. Uh, let's see. Palo Alto. Well, speaking of pals. <laughs> oh, we did, but uh, compadre, pal. It was right there, <laughs> right in front of my face. I'm sorry. I completely didn't notice that. Well, that means this, I don't think this is going to be pals. At least it would be surprising if it were, because you, you wouldn't repeat an answer like that, even in this sort of cryptic hidden way. I don't think anyway. Newspaper section could be the arts section, maybe. California concert site. Oh, and this, this is not, at least I don't think this is going to be a themed clue. I don't know. Just I'm not sure. 
mag that began endorsing political candidates in 2014. Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head. Some laptops could be Acer's. This certainly, as someone suggested recently, and I'm inc increasingly inclined to agree, the official uh, computer manufacturer of the New York Times crossword. Um, oh, Cosmopolitan magazine, maybe? And then Raban, fashion designer Raban, I just don't know. Kind of identity. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm failing down here, aren't I? California concerts at Alto, Altamont. These all seem pretty good to me, but I just can't, um, I can't seem to close this out. What am I missing? Kind of identity. This feels like it should be quite gettable. I mean, what could this possibly be? A, I mean, it'll probably end with an A or something. Altamont. I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't ring a bell for me. Paco, that's his name, or Paco. Um, racial identity, you could have a racial identity. Okay, right, I was thinking of something like, I don't know what I was thinking, I was thinking of sort of a secret identity or something, that kind of thing, which didn't put me on the right track. So does the, let's see, so what is parishes? Fellows, peers? That's right, okay. What am I missing? What am I missing? We have Oslo here and Fellows. Oh, I can't believe I'm just not seeing this. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Let's see. So we need six, right? We do need one more. It said six. So we had Quito, Riga, um, Kingston, Oslo, Berlin. Yeah, we need one more. And it would be here. It would be symmetrical. So what is it? Um... Oh, I'm very frustrated at myself. This is this is not appropriate to the question that was asked um, of me at the beginning of the puzzle, but I can't think what the answer is. Parishes, par oh Paris, Paris. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So fellows, he's. Oh right, okay, sure. I guess so. I'm not crazy about he's for fellows, but I guess you could say. I'm a he, I'm a fellow, I, I mean, sort of. Yeah, I guess I see it. Uh, it's a bit awkward, but but what is not awkward is Paris. I mean, it's right there. It's just absolutely staring me in the face. What's funny is after, so with these two, I said, ah, they're at the beginning and the end. So that's what I was really looking for. But then once I realized the capital gains bit, the capital city could be in the middle of the clue, then that's what I started looking for, especially because it was also in the middle here, and I was only looking for for words that that occurred um, midway through this word, and I wasn't at all looking at the beginning or the end, which is what I should have done. Uh, anyway, Paris, France, of course, there we go. All right, that is it. That is our capital gains clue. Very clever, and um, certainly gave me a workout on the thematic front. <laughs> that was a tough one. And capital gains are, of course, also proceeds from the sale of an asset, which is I suppose if you're deriving capital gains, it's an asset that has grown in value. Um, much like our skill at solving the crossword with enough practice. And uh, I will say that it's entirely possible that had I solved this puzzle prior to um, starting this series, I may well have just gone through, filled it out, gotten crosses. It's possible I wouldn't even have... Uh, who knows? It's impossible to know. But I could imagine... Oh, having solved this and not even really paid attention to this clue 
and uh, never have been the wiser. That was the, I mean, in retrospect, I solved quite a few crosswords that way. Um, so uh, today I, I stuck with it and figured out what was going on until the end. So uh, should have gotten Paris a bit earlier, but what can you do? And there we have it. That was the crossword for Thursday. I think there was just one clue. Um, let's see. I think there was just one additional comment to read about yesterday's puzzle. And I would sometimes skip it if it were just one, but I'm not going to today because it's such a ridiculous thing. Uh, I even, I drew attention to the fact in yesterday's crossword that, well, so I thought the Seattle Kraken, which was clued in yesterday's puzzle, I thought, oh, that must be Seattle's major league soccer team, the MLS team. And I even said, wouldn't it be ridiculous if I got this the sport wrong? Turns out I did. I mean, even the fact that I considered that possibility should have told me, yes, it's going to be wrong. And I should never attempt to say anything about any sport because it will certainly be incorrect. And Stephen Giblin uh, informs me that the Seattle crack in our team in the NHL, the National Hockey League, the Seattle MLS team is the Sounders. And of course, now that I see it, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that to be true, but uh, didn't help me yesterday. And uh, no surprise there. Uh, there we have it. That is it for today's crossword, today's video, and I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow for the Friday puzzle when we will have no theme, no theme tomorrow, most likely. Um, so we won't have to worry about any of this sort of seeing theme business. Um, so I hope you join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care. Mm -hmm.